Today I want to share with you part two of this message. I was talking financial management of the kingdom. And in this message I've been talking about that God gave us dominion. God set up the world for man to have dominion, authority, to set up government, to set up rule. In fact, our passage is coming from Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. And it reads, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the land and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Today I want to look at the thought, five principles of financial management. God has dominion on his mind for us. Isn't it good to know that God didn't want you to be the bottom? He called you to be the top. He didn't put you under the animals, but he put you over them. Isn't it good to know that God had you on his mind? Who is man that God is mindful of him? And, and he would give us the authority over the thing that he created, but the blessed part about him creating things is when he created us, that we are created in his image. And that's important because sometimes I look like my physical father and I may take attributes from my physical father, but isn't it good to know that regardless of what you look like in the natural, you were created in the image of almighty God in the spiritual. That has meaning to me because it means that I come from good stock. I, I, I come from the king of king and the lord of lords. But it's interesting when we start looking at man supposedly having dominion, authority, rule over the earth. This was spoken not to all men, but to believers. It's not spoken to all men. It's spoken to believers. But when we look at the earth, it doesn't look like the believers have dominion. It looks like the world has dominion over the believer. So when we start looking at this thing, and I was talking um, about the kingdom, trying to rediscover who we are. So often life can shape us and form us and, and contort us into the image of the world and we forgot that we were not shaped and formed in the image of the world. We're shaped and formed in the image of almighty God. And sometimes because of that position that we're in, we've got to rediscover, uncover, uh, stop hiding who we are because the God had us on his mind and he created us in his image. We saw last week in Genesis 2, 4, and 5 that when God created the world, it said in Genesis 4 and 5 that God would not release his blessings in the world because there was no man to manage what he had produced. And what we found from that is that he says there was no man to work the ground. And we found that that word work means, comes from a word that means to manage. To manage means to have a, a authority over the materials, over the money, over the resources. 
And management requires that you put policies and procedures and standards in place to cause the organization to be successful in the end. We talked about there being a difference between management and leadership. Management dealt with materials, leadership dealt with people. And we said that many churches have good leaders but poor managers. How do you know? Because the resources, the standards, the policies, the procedures are not there to get to the successful end. God called us to have dominion, and it seems that the church is always lagging behind the world. Why? Because the world took the principles from the Bible and they wrote them in books and they followed those principles and we said that a principle is a law or a rule that works regardless who works it. So the world is working the principles of God and the people of God are sitting there hearing the word, not working it, and we are following behind the world. That's why most of the businesses are owned by people in the world. That principle that God has given us, they're working it better than we are. And God says, I have to use my principles to protect my provisions. And what he was saying is, I don't have a manager in the world to manage what I want to release my provision. God protects his provisions by applying his principle that I won't release my provision until I have a woman that can manage what I gave her. Then I can have a man that can manage what I gave them. And so today, as we're talking about in this season, I hear the Lord saying to us that he wants to do great things and he is doing great things. And, and, and I, um, I found it interesting that um, I didn't want to go down this road, but God has me going down this road. And, and I know that he is taking me in an uncharted course. And what I mean by that, normally I start thinking about a series and I know what the messages are in the series. And I know when it starts and I know when it's going to end. But God is doing something different with me this time. He started with my men's Bible study. And, and, and he started downloading this thing in my, in my life. And, and when he changed my life, I, he, he just kind of refocused me on something that I wasn't focused on or something that I had known but wasn't doing it in the way that he was giving it to me now. And so I in, interrupted my men's Bible study and we started talking about principles of growing rich and thinking and growing rich. And I, I need to say this. Um, God ain't never had a problem with money. But what God wants us to know is the same principles he uses to think and grow rich, which the world uses as a standard of success, you can use those same principles and grow rich in whatever area you need. But he was talking about, he was talking about money in this particular 15 disciples or disciplines, and I sent it to the men and... and, and uh, We've been going down this road, and God has been blessing us. And I shared with our Bible study after last Sunday's meeting, uh, so many came up to me and said, listen, I need to get more of this. And I heard the Lord tell me to do this, and I'm thinking, God, what are you? So I'm starting this Tuesday. I'm taking our Bible study on a course to increase our financial literacy to increase our financial literacy. I, I was fortunate that one of our sons, uh, uh, Carlo Laror, has been on the, the Bible study with us, and every time the young man speaks, he, he is dropping knowledge, and, and we've got others. Uh, you all know, or you should know, that uh, my guest for our anniversary is going to be Bishop Moore. You probably don't know him by Bishop Moore, but he's the owner of uh, Church's Chicken, but what made me invite him was not that. What made me invite, invite him was that he is third generation and his son is fourth generation legacy where his great-grandfather was an entrepreneur. His, his, 
His grandfather was an entrepreneur. His father was an entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur. Now his son is an entrepreneur. And God called us to be lenders and not the borrowers. And I was just pleased when he was on the line and, and he began to speak. And I said, Lord, that's why I hadn't been able to find a speaker for this anniversary because God wanted me to choose him. And he not only is going to share with you what he's heard, but his family is actually, who. how many folks you know that are third and fourth generation business owners and entrepreneurs and, and they're training their kids. And what's important, people of God, is we are supposed to be training our kids how to rule and have dominion. Do y'all remember back in the day? I mean, let me see. How many of you all ever had one of those lemonade stands coming up? Anybody? Nobody? Let me. Not many. Not many. You know what? I was thinking this morning that God wants us to train up our children, and sometimes you got to know that you can begin to shape their minds by making them have an entrepreneurial thought and follow you. They're following you anyway, but why get this word and not introduce them to the word? Because God gives us authority over the earth. You're training them up in the authority. I know that uh, in my neighborhood, some girls or young girls are always putting up a lemonade stand and their mama need to teach them to put just a little bit more sugar in that lemonade. You know, some folks don't know how to make, you got to make Kool-Aid before you can make lemonade. And, you, and, and those good Kool-Aid drinkers know what I mean. You got to get some warm water. Yeah, you got to mix it up before you put that sugar in. I, I go over there, I see them, I'm like, man, and then they pour me a cup of that lemonade, and it's got sugar like this at the bottom, and it ain't sweet. I'm like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. But what God is doing, people of God, so often we come to the church for inspiration, but we don't apply the information, and then we end up in frustration. I said we come to be inspired, but God is not always trying to inspire your feelings. He's trying to change your mind. But we come. But if we will come and get the inspiration and apply the information, then it won't lead to frustration, but it will lead to transformation. We've got to get the inspiration, apply the information that will lead to transformation. It, the whole thing is, too, as I send it to you all this week, think and grow rich. It's not in the growing rich. It's in, it's in the thinking. It's in the thinking. And I gave you a real-life example last week that we were talking about it, and, and uh, a gentleman who had had a stroke and wasn't able to walk was applying these same principles about set a goal and decide to walk toward that goal. And, and don't worry if you don't get success the first time. Just understand that you took a, a step. In fact, somebody on the line said, you know what? Um, stop looking at every failure as a defeat, but uh, look at it as a step toward victory. And he says, maybe, maybe you don't go to the, your goal is to go to the gym and work out. But for the week, you, you just drive to the parking lot and sit for five minutes and come home and count that as victory. Huh? Yes, because it's moving you toward the progress and stop looking at everything as win or lose. Because sometimes God will take what you thought was evilly where you lost and you learn more in what you lost than you do when you got victory so what I hear the Lord saying to me which is very uncomfortable he said go down this road and I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there so all week long he's revealing things to me and I'm coming back to reveal them to you in this passage today uh, five principles the scripture said that we are blessed to be fruitful to multiply replenish and subdue he says you're blessed to be fruitful you know what blessed means it means that you are favored because you're a believer you're in position with God to receive his provision because of where you are in him blessed refers to the believer it does not refer to the unbeliever 
But because you're a believer, you're in position to receive the provisions. Remember that God would not release his provision until he had a woman or a man because it says man, and that's mankind. That's mankind. He, he says, I'm not going to release my provisions until I have a believer that's in position to receive the provisions of God. So you are blessed to be in position to receive the provisions of God. You're in right position because you're in right relationship. And he's trying to let us know. He says, he says God blessed them and he said, I have blessed you because you are a believer and I have principles that you're supposed to manage what I put in your hand and you, because you love me, you won't mismanage my provision. So you are in a blessed place. But why is it that God seems to be allowing the wicked to rule over the righteous? He says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It's laid up because the wicked are applying the principles and the righteous are just praying about it. And we want to use a miracle to overlook bad management. God says, I can't even give you what I want to give you because you won't take care of it. In fact, you, you, you're, you're too busy uh, flexing and flossing and everybody can see what you got going on. But do you know that people that are well off, they don't flaunt it? In fact, if they look like they got 100, they probably got 10,000 because they live beneath their means. And what God is trying to show us, he's saying you are blessed to be in position. He says, I can release it to you. And, and what he's doing, he's training you all the time. Understand that you're just a steward of it. And if you'll be a good steward of it, I can give you more of it. And I'm going to keep releasing it to you. He says, you are blessed. And everybody isn't blessed, but you are blessed. He says, but you've got to be willing to have principles and procedures in place to take care of what I gave you. So what God says, I know that I'm going to give you that which you can handle or otherwise you will take what I give you and bring it down to what you can handle. He says, I want you to enlarge your capacity to receive from me. And, 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 and what he's saying to us, we are blessed with the provisions of God. So you are blessed to be a business owner if that's your desire. But what we do, many times we, we want a side hustle instead of a business. What we do is we stop where other people start. It's okay for you to do hair in your basement or in your uh, garage, but that's where you start. And no, I'm not asking anybody uh, don't you run out there and quit your job and say, Pastor said we need to become an entrepreneur and we need to stop my job. No, you do entrepreneurship on the sideline until it demands more of your time. You don't stop. You do it as a part time as you're learning, as you're growing. Now, this works if you're looking for resources or if you're looking for just a better physical life or whatever the issue is with you, you got to start at one place and keep learning, and God will keep taking you to the next place. He says so often, we love the inspiration that we receive here, but he's looking for transformation. But many of us don't understand that when God blesses us to be inspired, that inspiration is only 1% of it, 99% is perspiration. Many of us want the, we want the, we want the provision, but we don't want the perspiration. And 99% of it is perspiration. It, it's it's uh, persistence. It's going after this thing that God has given us. God wants us to think differently. God wants us to think differently. Uh, I saw this. My, my son-in-law sent me this the other day. So, so often, 
We are in the church, but we are illiterate about the things of the world, by the things of God. We got the word, but the world got our stuff because we don't know anything about finances. He said this, the illiterate of the future will not be those who can't read or write, but those who will not learn. The, the illiterate won't be the ones that can't read and write. It's those who will not learn. And so what we have to do is we have to unlearn some stuff and relearn. Are y'all with me? See, because I'm still walking under the shadow of what mama and daddy gave me. Some of that stuff I've got to be willing to unlearn and relearn. So as I talk about this, I really want to be practical. It learn means to hear, to absorb, to acquire new knowledge. We have to be willing to acquire new knowledge. You're, you're, you're learning to do a business, if that's what you, I'm talking about, financial management, but you got to be willing to learn, absorb, grasp new knowledge in the thing that God is calling you to do. It's interesting, when a mother gets ready to have a baby, don't they go to reading books? No, no, they have, they have, they have a mother, they have a grandmother, but when it's time for her to get ready to give birth to something new, she starts reading and educating, and good fathers do too. Because what, now we know what's going on in the first trimester, second trimester. We know, oh, those are Braxton Hicks. Don't get too excited. Well, you don't know that the first child. The first child, you freak out about everything, you know. <laughs> so we understand God is saying to us that in order to walk out the blessing, we've got to be willing to unlearn and relearn. And he says this, Proverbs 4 and 7. He says, wisdom is the principle. He says, wisdom is the principle. The principle is the law or, or a truth that works regardless. He says, wisdom is the principal thing, but in all thy getting, get understanding. A, a lot of times we have knowledge. Knowledge means to know but we don't have wisdom. Wisdom is the proper application of what you know. And then, and then, look, he says, I need you to get an understanding of the principle. And I like to do it this way. If, if knowledge is the principle thing, he says, I want you to stand under that knowledge, understand the knowledge, so you can know how to take the knowledge apply the wisdom of it and manipulate the knowledge to the successful end. So God is trying to bring us into this next level, whatever that is. If you don't, if you're trying to become a better father, then he says, get knowledge about that thing. Get some wisdom about that thing. Get some understanding about that thing. And that means that you're going to have to keep learning. Now, some of us say, well, you know, I don't like reading. No excuse, because they got a video for everything nowadays. You, you, you say, well, you know, I, I don't like listening, uh, uh, looking at videos. I, I'd much rather have something I could take with me. No excuse. Do you know if you, they got software that it will actually take any book and read it to you verbatim. So why is it that the world has our stuff is because we stop learning somewhere along the way. He says, learn. And he says, so I'm blessed to be in position. And then he tells me to be fruitful. God never tells you to do something that you don't have the ability to do. He says, be fruitful and multiply. The fruitfulness comes from the seed of the thing. Uh, God says, if I called you to be fruitful and multiply with a child, which it refers to as well, 
then you must have the seed man of God and you must have the woman who has the womb man of God in order to come together and produce the child people of God. God doesn't ask you to do something that he didn't already give you the ability to do. So when God blessed us, we're in position. He says, now be fruitful. What does that mean? It means that, remember we were talking about that before God left, he left gifts unto men. And I was saying to you, your gift is the seed that God has given you so you can be begin to multiply, to be fruitful. The seed is the gift. The fruit is what comes from the use of, of the gift and now here's where sometimes we focus too much on money <sighs> money isn't the fruit of it meeting a need for people is the fruit of it money will follow your meeting the need of fixing a problem then will come the money don't chase money because you know what will happen? The enemy will find out you care so much about what's written on a green piece of paper. He will find out what will it take to buy you? What will it take for you to sell your soul for almighty dollar? Money is a terrible leader, a terrible master, but you got to make money your slave. And you do that by grain, gaining knowledge first understanding that you're in position to be blessed, to be favored, to be gifted, to have priority. And then he says, I want you to be fruitful in the use of your gift. What I was saying to you in a couple of messages is man of God, woman of God, when you find out what you're gifted to do, it, th that thing begins to possess you. The purpose that you were created, you don't possess it. It'll possess you. Anybody, God is calling to do something, you, you can't sleep. Sometimes you're like, oh God, my mind, my mind, my mind. Am I the only one? That thing will want to want to chase you, Travis. It'll be like, oh man, my mind day and night. I'm looking and thinking, but if you don't have anything worth living for, you're not willing to die for it either. And here's the thing: in order for God to give you this thing that He's trying to give you, something has to die. That old man, the old image that you had of yourself, the things that you said to you about who you are you got to remember and rehearse no I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm made in the image of God hey look I'm in position to be blessed God has given me the charisma to work my gift and the fruit of my work in the gift that will be the results of me using my gift and God is saying listen I have purposed you I have planned for you I need you to understand and we said stop looking for purpose out there start looking for purpose in here because we're having a relationship with him and God wants us to know he wants us to know fruitfulness another word for fruitfulness is productivity he wants us to be productive that's what happened when you and your wife got together y'all produced an offspring he wants us to be productive he says, I have given you a gift, which is your seed. Bring forth the fruit of productivity. You know what productivity becomes? When God drops an image, a, a thought, a vision in your mind. That thing, and we remember we said that the vision doesn't come from the sight of the eyes, but it comes from inspiration of God. It's, it's not it's not something you can see with your eyes, but you can see it in your spirit. And what God is saying to us, he says, I need you to know that I am giving you this thing. It needs to be so strong that it makes you productive. When you start looking at your gift, you come up with ideas and, and you start being imaginative, creative, that you start to produce things. People will pay you for what you can produce with your gift. We already are being paid for our gift, but it's called a salary. 
One of the things that God called us to leave an inheritance for our children's children, you can't do that with a salary. That's transactional. That's, you get the salary every time you go to work. God says, no, 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 no. I want you to be able to produce something. And he says, he says the next one, once you produce it, he says, be fruitful and then multiply what you produce. Every leader tries to duplicate or multiply herself with others. Leader, follower. The leader pours into the follower and, and tries to get them to understand the principles of productivity. No, you got to do this. You got to follow the procedures. You got to follow the system. You got to follow what I've laid out for you. So now you do it just the same way I do it. That's why you can um, uh, begin to see that these franchises, you can go overseas and get the same hamburger from Burger King that you could get right here. And sometimes it's a little different, though. You get to some of those countries, that meat, I'm not sure what we're eating. But all everything else is you start wanting to, want to chase a cat, you'll be like, I don't know. So that gift, your seed, is what leads to your fruitfulness. And then he says, I want you to reproduce, refine the process, train people in what you do. So you don't just have a garage salon. You get moved from there, open up a store, do your thing, and before you know it, you, other people will pay you to be able to have on-time catering on the side of their truck, but when they do, they got to follow your exact procedures and policies. It's important. This, I don't know what God has given you to be the manager over. This management is not leadership. Leadership deals with people and, and the influence of people to go from one point to the next point. This management is more quantifiable. It, it is more quantitative. It is, it's more literal. It, it's, it's the management of resources, materials. And it, it, it calls for policies, procedures, and know-how. And the higher level that God wants to take you to, the more you must learn and relearn and unlearn and relearn and unlearn and relearn. And, and you cannot go to the next level with the same level of knowledge. And it doesn't matter where you're playing the game at. If you're playing the game today and you're senior and you said, listen, I'm going to go and take my resources and I'm just going to stick them in the bank so I can be safe and, and, and uh that's okay, you choose to play that game. But one of the things, I'm reminded of the, the, the master that gave the talents to his servants. He gave five talents. The Bible says he gave talents according to their ability. Some of us want more, but God says you haven't enlarged your capacity. He gave five, he gave two, he gave one, and then the one that took the talent would not invest the talent. Let me say this. God called you to invest your talent, not just hold on to it and give it away. You've got to raise the value of your gift. But if you can be bought for $10 an hour and never think about the fact that you are blessed to receive the provision of God and declare more for yourself, you'll always be minimum wage. People will pay you what you have accepted because you haven't raised the value of what you are. But I dare you to dream big dreams. I dare you to understand that you're in position. You're in position to receive the provisions of God. But you can't do it on this level of knowledge. You, if you're going to receive it, you've got to not only get it and be fruitful with it and, and multiply it, reproduce. Reproduce. Refine your process. Learn at the next level so you can go to the next level. Don't allow yourself to be intimidated by the process. Everybody that works toward a goal 
has to deal with the fear and the trepidation of what they see. But here's the problem, people of God. We, we, we see the vision. But if, listen to me. We see the vision God gave us. But, but if you focus on the dream or the vision and you don't focus on the process, you'll never reach the dream or the vision because you've got to be willing to focus on the process in order to get to the dream. But many of us, we're focusing on the dream and, and we need to just take the next step and focus on it. So that's why we start over all the time, me included. It's like, wait a minute, I, I started good, but God is transforming my mind and I gotta keep my focus and I can't be focusing on the dream and forget the process. So we're, we're constantly saying where I'm going, but you're not dealing with where you are. You just ate a whole row of chocolate chip cookies. You didn't eat one. You just ate a whole pint of uh, chunky monkey. See, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all know that chunky monkey, you can't eat one. You can't just eat one on school. It jumped me. Am I, am I the only one? But you got you to gotta focus on the process, and, and you're going to struggle in the thing that's holding you back. Y'all better hear me. You're going to struggle most in the thing that's holding you back. Maybe you're a great leader, but you're not a real good manager because you don't like systems. You don't, the system is there to guide you and let you know when you're going out of bounds and hold you in the middle of the road, but you don't like system. So you keep violating the system and you keep looking at the dream of where you're going and it looks like you're moving, but you have nullified the process that's there to perfect you for when you get there you can manage what comes at the next level but if you focus on the dream and not on the process you'll never get it you'll never get it it's in the process it's in the process somebody say it's right now it, 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 it's right now stop giving yourself an alibi I'll start on Monday no start I'll do it on Monday, but start. Wherever you're going, whether it's your health, your wealth, your relationship, if you just keep thinking that you're going to have this thing at the end, but you won't bear down and take the necessary steps right now, you'll never have it. So we understand he wants us to multiply. Your systems will determine your reproduction. Oh, y'all better get that. Your system is going to determine what you reproduce. Anybody ever seen it? People are good, this, that, but they go outside their own system. I did it for a real long time. I was saying, get ready to change, get ready to change, so I didn't have to. But the system, so when people have found the product and they reproduce that product, they come and they, they build systems around that product. So, so we find out that, that you have to prepare to reproduce. You, you must prepare to reproduce. I was talking to a business owner and I kept saying to him, hey, you gotta get systems. Listen, you gotta work yourself out of a job. Listen, you got to learn to delegate. And here's the thing, people of God, when it's your baby and you want it done right, that desire to want it done right will stop you from doing it right. You'll keep doing it instead of getting somebody who can't do it as good as you, but when you get them trained, you're not even willing to train them because you want it done right and you're doing it wrong because you're still doing it and you're not reproducing God is trying to say something to you. And, 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 and what I'm hearing the Lord say is I need you to do what you're gifted most to do. If somebody else can do it, why are you doing it, Rob? Oh, I'm fighting this thing hard. Because that's my thing, that's my thing, that's my thing. 
I much prefer the leadership over the management. But most churches do. That's why they're broke. I don't mean financially. I mean systematically broke. Pastor, got to get the church early and open up the church, turn on the lights, turn on the heat, put the chickens out. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all from the country, y'all know you had to put them chickens out. You can't leave them cooped up all day. But the system is broken. He says, multiply. And then he says, uh, replenish the earth. God is saying, this is what I want to give you to do. When, when you think about Walmart, y'all you, you know that guy started from a little bitty shop. And, and then he... He began to reproduce. He produced something. People start coming. But the reason that Walmart and Amazon and so many things are doing well is they've set up distribution systems. What are you talking about, Pastor Campbell? Once I created the product and I multiplied the product using good systems, now I need to replenish what I have multiplied by making sure that the system is always there to correct, to, to align. I've got to be willing to, to supply what is needed on a continual basis. That's why you see uh, McDonald's, it changes its design every five or six years. It doesn't say, I leave it alone. You keep adjusting for what's coming. Y'all remember they used to have the playground when they first had the playground in that thing? We was like, yes! Now, you can't hardly find one. That season is over. There was a season when churches used to go around in buses and pick up people. No more buses. But what we have to do is know that God is using your gift and with your gift comes a vision and with your vision comes provision and with vision comes purpose and you don't possess purpose purpose possesses you and causes you to see what others cannot see that's why they call you the leader because you saw it first and if you don't see nothing you can't lead people but you find out you can lead people in the thing that God is leading you and 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 doing it afraid and, and finding your way and, and stepping out. I'm trying to talk to somebody's future and you've allowed fear to stop you because you don't know. It's nothing wrong with not knowing. It's something wrong with staying ignorant. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. It doesn't matter. God says, listen, I created this thing I had you on my mind. He says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to be productive because you're blessed to receive. How is it that they are not blessed and they are getting? It's because they're working the principle. We have to change our mindset from being consumers to being producers. Why not you? Why not you? If God didn't give it to you, then don't worry about it. But what did he give you? What are you here for? Not in this church. What, why are you still here? Who are you supposed to be mentoring? Who's supposed to be mentoring you? What are you supposed to be doing? Are you just going to hang out until he take you home? He must have purpose for you. He says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. And then lastly, he says, subdue. Subdue means you ain't here to take part. You're here to take over. You, you, you ain't just, show him, you ain't just trying to be somebody else on the block in your niche. You're saying, I want it all. Terry, you ain't, you, you, you're, not, you're not just satisfied with being the sales uh, realtor of the year, you say, listen, I don't want to just do it one year. I'm here for every year. Y'all go and put my name on that thing and see what happened next year. Don't just compete. Somebody say, take over. Find that thing. I mean, look, look, I don't care if it's you getting ready to lose 
nine pounds of weight. Man, you go to the gym, you be there every day. You do the same thing. Let them talk about you. I don't care if you go in there, you just walk around, look at the weights. How y'all doing? When I, when I first start getting back into it, that's exactly what I do. My wife said, you going to the gym? Yep. You ain't taking no water, nothing. Won't need it. <laughs> I'm just going to hang out. But you, you need to take them. I started riding a bike two years ago. On May the 21st, I'm going to ride 100 miles. Now, 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 I rode 50 miles, and my legs and my butt is saying, what the world are you doing? Go home, I got to sleep for three days. Jesus rose, three days, take me about that long. But the thing is, God is trying to say something to us. He says, I want you to control the market of whatever you do. Go to another level in this thing. And maybe you're, maybe you're content right where you are, then be content. Be content. But God just is showing us that we got to change our mindset from being consumers to producers Change your mindset from just saving. If you got a scarcity mentality, you will act like the one who had the one talent and buried a thing in the bank. When the bank takes your money, they lend it. They invest it. Why aren't you investing? I don't mean going and play the stock market. If you don't know what you're doing, find something you believe in and get educated about it. And be willing to pay somebody that you trust that's going to do it. But look, there is no get rich quick. If it sounds too good to be true, if they offer you something for nothing, I want to go talk to a lawyer, a really high level lawyer. It took me three weeks to get even on his calendar. And guess what? He wanted. I've seen two. One was reasonable. This other one is crazy. <laughs> but I know that if I want to get the kind of knowledge to go to where God is calling me to go, I've got to be willing to pay for that. And then I've got to know what my value is. See, I, I see what I'm going to produce, but I've got to be willing to, before you invest in, in land and products, invest Invest in you. Invest in you. You're not ready to invest in anything else until you invest. Invest in you. Take the time to learn. Talk to people who are a lot smarter than you are about that. If you're the smartest one in the room, you've got to change rooms. Doesn't mean you can't come back to this room. I told you last week, the guy told me, I don't dream big enough. I'm like, what? The best thing I could have heard in my life. God wants us to understand he's called us to be in dominion. It, 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 it blows my mind. Tell me why. Can, and now, y'all let me be ethnic for just a moment. Can anybody beat your grandmama cooking soul food? I mean, now, now, I'm just going to go ahead and claim. You can't find a white, a brown, a yellow person that can beat a black person from cooking soul food. That's what we came out of. But why? Riddle me this. We can cook the food, but we haven't figured out how to own the restaurant. Because we're limited. We, we still got that limited perspective. And don't hate on somebody because it ain't easy for no one. It is not easy for anyone. That, that, that same white, yellow, brown person that goes and opens up a store, they work like a D-O-G and they got to deal with all the problems. But I'm saying, what about us? What about you? You got to be willing to do it, even afraid. You got to be willing to do it afraid. I don't know what God has called you to. Please stand to your feet. These principles that he's given us.
and, and I don't know, I do know that he's called me to, to stay in this thing about raising a financial literacy. Uh, I, um, I've always said it, and a lot of it I've done, but I haven't seen it the way I see it now. Y'all feel that way. You know it, but you don't see it the way you see it now. I'm going to email to the church two videos. One is a book, Think and Grow Rich. It ain't on the rich. It's on the thinking. It's on the thinking. You'll see all kinds of examples of the, the, the person that came up with the post-it note. Just thought, you know, I, I, I got all these scrap pieces of paper. Why don't I, I'm going to glue them together and then they go to New York and they open up the store. Nobody comes. Then they decided to go to the different businesses and give them out. Before you know it, here comes production. Same thing with Famous Amos. You know he took somebody else's recipe. He took the recipe, modified it a little bit, because you can't have it exactly right, you know. He puts his face on it. What do you know about cookies? Nothing. Now all of a sudden, it's in the thinking. It's in the thinking. But you've been too afraid. But what about all these other people that do it? What do you, what, what do they have that you don't, especially since you are blessed to be in position to receive the provisions of God. But you won't do the principle. You won't walk in the law. You won't walk in the truth of what God has established for us to be dominion over. So when you receive it, just let it change your thought. Change your thought. Just change your thought. The 15 principles to to think and grow rich. It's not on the riches. It's on the thinking. It's on the thinking. And don't get too, don't get mad because th this is from the world. But the wealth of the wicked, they got the wealth. They know something that we seem to not understand. Y'all remember the, the shrewd manager mismanaged everything. Jesus tells the story. Then he goes to the the different lenders and Christ compliments him on being shrewd, not shrewd in a disrespectful or dishonest way, but understanding the business of it. Christ. I say that because I think it's in the 15 principles. The girl that's talking, every once in a while, she shows she's from the world. Now, if it's going to offend you and you can't, you can't, you, you just... She said something that is profound and profanity. And you say, Pastor, I can't believe you sent it. Don't, li don't, don't, don't listen to it. Go find your own. I, I found that one and I had to throw the meat. Listen, listen. Nobody's asking you to eat bones. Eat the meat. I'm not asking you to eat bones. I, I've already told you, so don't be coming back. I can't believe he said that. I'm sending it. Now, don't, if y'all on TV, if, if you get it, it's probably in that thing, I think it's 30 minutes, and there's probably three different times she opens her little filthy mouth and says some stuff. I ain't eating no bones. I'm here for meat. Because God wants to do something. He, 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 Jesus commends the shrewd servant. He said, they got it. They've been working the principles. It's time that we do. And maybe it's money and maybe it's not money. Maybe it's just you being a better husband. You being a better wife. You fixing your physical body. Learning, you know, what you should eat and what you should drink. And how many hours of sleep. But you're going to have to know that you are blessed. You're in position. Whatever God has given you to do. Don't you chase money. 
cause money and favor to chase you by understanding the principles. We are called to have dominion. We're called to have dominion. Right where you're standing, I want to pray for us. I want to pray for us because I know that God is speaking to us in this church. He's always said that he wanted you to be a blessing. That this church would be blessed. See, when you went through what you went through with your son, and then you come into the church, and you see someone else with their son, and you can see the signs of what you already been through. That's the blessing. The older women can teach the younger women. Peter, after you come through, go back and strengthen your brother. That's the blessing. You, you, are, you are blessed to receive the provisions of God. Whatever area, maybe you are in the place where Tom was. And he said, you know what? I'm going to set a new goal. Maybe you've been setting back and you lost focus of what God called you to do. Go dust it off. Dream again. God is bringing this to you because he's trying to get to you. He's, he, nobody else matters right now. This is between you and him. Nobody knows what it is you're thinking or dreaming or hoping for. It's between you and him. I, I, I challenge you, begin to prophesy in your lives of your children, in the lives of your grown children, in your own life, in the life of your spouse. Begin to to learn and, and relearn, unlearn old things, relearn new things. Be willing to grow in the things that God has given you provision for. Lord God, we thank you today.